Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. And good evening. Thank you for joining me this evening. I am so fortunate to have with me this evening a wonderful, talented, international author, KT Banks. Welcome, KT. Hi, how are you, Rox? You know, I'm just really glad to be here tonight. And um, I'm anxious to make sure we tell people all about your books and what's going on. So how about we get right into it? Okay, that sounds great. So I kind of want to start tonight uh, off on how you got into writing. Let's, let's kind of start at the beginning. Well, it's a funny story. Um, all my life, I've been a voracious reader, and I used to wait and wait for my favorite authors to have their next book come out. And then when they did, I'd race down to the store and buy it and run back home and read it, and I would read it by that night. And oh, my gosh. <laughs> at some point, my husband looked at me and he said, you know what, why don't you just write them yourself? And that's when a light went off, and I thought, you know what, maybe I should try that. So I did. I put my money where my mouth was, and I sat down, and it just flowed out of me. It was like nothing I ever expected. And so I wrote the whole manuscript pretty quickly, actually. And then my husband took it in the other room to read it, and he came back out with a real funny look on his face. He's like, this reads like a real book. <laughs> I said, yay, that's what it's supposed to do. So that was the beginning of my writing career. It, I never thought when I was little that I would be one. It was never something I thought I'd want to do, even though my cousin, Susan P. Baker, is also a writer. And I always loved her books, but it just never occurred to me that I should try it too. So it's kind of interesting as far as that new book goes, because when did you actually start writing? Because it wasn't recently. It was 2008, and I, I wrote my first book, and then I wrote my second book, and I'm not a fast writer because I have a busy life on top of everything else. And then my sister passed away, and um, I couldn't write for about four and a half years until my same cousin, Susan, kind of had a talk with me last spring and told me to snap out of it, basically. <laughs> So she's responsible for me writing again. So last summer, I had to update the first two books in the series because one of them talked about the Dallas Cowboy Stadium from years ago instead of the, the newest one. So I updated right. the first two books, and then I wrote the third book that I was three-fourths of the way finished with when my sister passed away. So I, I finished that last year. I got all new book covers for all of them and, and re-released them last fall. Now, your first book, though, kind of, um, you know, kind of brought you to the fame of international author. So what happened with that? Because that's a, that's a status, right? In, in author world, that's terrific. I would like to say I was responsible for that, but in truth, my book got pirated. Oh. And I, I thought it was only selling in America, and it turned out it was pirated, and it started selling all around the world. And I started getting emails and fan mails from uh, people writing into my website and emailing me how much they liked the book. And they were from South Africa and Australia and some countries I admit I never even heard of. So, and at first it really upset me like it does most, auth most authors. And then I thought about, um, that's one way to get your name out there. So when Nico's Guilt came out, the sales for that were better, I think, than they would have been had not that happened. So now your stories, to be fair, they are all action and adventure kind of thriller genres, right? Yeah, the first book is really, uh, they put it in the thriller genre, and it, it's got some romance in it, it's got some steamy parts, it's got a serial killer, um, uh, you know, it's just got all sorts of things. More of a thriller and a mystery than the second two in the same series, which are more action and adventure, not so much mystery. So let's talk about the first one, because the first one is Stand and Protect, right? Right. Okay, so Stand and Protect being the first one has the serial killer, and... Um, how, how, like, what's your main character in that story uh, kind of doing? It started out with a girl named Shannon who had a very traumatic incident in her childhood that caused her as an adult to be kind of a doormat of a woman and very shy. And she got a job at a big luxury apartment community in North Dallas, which is a big industry in this area. And uh, the girls that she worked with kind of treated her badly and she never could, you know, find it in herself to stand up to them. And one day she's out checking apartments and she finds a dead girl in her, apart in her apartment. And it's just, you know, shocks her and stuns her so bad. And she runs all the way back to the apartment community office and calls the police. And eventually they realize there is a serial killer. And so they put Detective Luke Manning undercover as a maintenance man at that community. And uh, he has a partner named Nico. 
and things just snowball from there. It kind of gets crazy. There's some funny moments in the book. There's some sad moments in the book. There's scary moments in the book. And nobody that I have ever known or that has ever written to me has said that they figured out who the killer was before I told them at the end of the book. Although the killer is there throughout the book. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. So it's a mystery within a mystery. Yeah. So people that are picking up book number one for the first time, if you fill out, figure out the killer, before you get to the end of the book, you need to send an email to KT Banks. I have always said that. I say that on my, my website, which is ktbanks.net. I'm on Facebook all the time and other social media. And I'm always asking people, please, if you can figure out who the killer is, let me know. Because as of today, nobody, not even my own family members, have figured out who the killer was until I disclosed it near the end of the book. That's amazing. That's a great, <laughs> great sign of a good story. Yay! I'll turn in the pages all the way to. <laughs> now, I know that Stand and Protect is available in multiple formats. So, you want to share with the, the uh, audience what those formats are? Yeah, it's in paperback, it's in uh, ebooks like Kindle, and, and it's also uh, Audible. It was my first book that I got turned into Audible. And I'm happy to announce the second book in the series Nico's Guild is just on the verge of approval from Audible. It's already been completed by the narrator and it should be released I think next week hopefully as an Audible too. So that'll be my third book that's available in all three categories and then we'll work on Spike Lee's book in the or the most current book in the series. It's not going to be a trilogy. It's going to go ahead and be a series. All right. There you go. Um, so let's talk about and back up just to the first book. What made you decide that you wanted to do an Audible? Well, actually, I have sons from the ages of 23 to 38. I have three sons, and the two youngest ones um, listen to Audible books now more than they read because they like to multitask. One of them, like, he's a realtor, and he drives around in his car, and he listens to books. Another one plays video games, and he listens to books. And I thought, well, even if the young people are doing it. And then I have some uh, relatives that have some vision problems and eye problems, and they like the Audible books. And currently, my Audible book is outselling my paperback and ebooks, which shocked me. I did not know that was going to happen. That's very remarkable. So, <laughs> how did you find your narrator? Because I think your narr narrator is John Torrentine. Yeah, uh, he, he's an expat. He's an American citizen that lives in China. And he does a lot of voiceover commercials for, I think, Mercedes and different companies like that. And um, I just, I went on Audible and I put the book out there for auditions. And I also listened to a lot of the different um, narrators. And I, I loved his voice when I found him. And so I contacted him before he contacted me and asked him to do a, um, a sample for me. And I really liked it. So we were on board and he's going to do all three of the first three books for me. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so when you did that, did you find the process was you know, something that you could work through based on the instructions that were on ACX, or did you have to uh, have a lot of help getting that book out? I'm not real technologically savvy, but somehow I figured it out on my own, and I got it done. It, I don't think, um, I had a little bit of trouble figuring out the ACX website, which is Audible, and, um, I, you know, trial and error, I finally got it figured out. I uploaded my books. You have to upload a different cover for Audible than you do for a paperback or for an ebook. It's like every different version of it has to have a different cover. Right. I mean, they look the same. They're just stretched out differently. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. So, so you, if, you know, we have some people listening that are aspiring authors. So if they're, if they're wanting to go down this path of creating this kind of format, it, they could do it themselves? Yeah, yeah. Indie publishing or self-publishing is very big these days, and some people choose to do it. Like John Locke used to be a published author, you know, with the big publishing houses, and after he had published a few of those, he started looking into the indie author business, and now he's an indie author doing very well on his own. And it's, it's happening more and more nowadays because you send out, as a writer, and especially as a new writer, you send out so many query letters to agents just trying, hoping and praying somebody's going to find you. But even J.K. Rowling's had trouble getting found like that she was in a slush pile and they had a new girl in the company that they said here you know just go ahead and read this and she's the one that really fell in love with it and pushed it to the bigger agents and finally got it done but your manuscript can sit in a slush pile for months or years or just never even get seen again and so to save time you know I'm, I'm in my middle ages now when I finally decided to work to be a, a writer um, I think indie publishing was 
the right way for me to go. I really enjoy it. I like being in charge of everything because I'm a little bit of a control freak. So this way I get to do it all myself. There you go. <laughs> so you have three books in the series. And what I want you to do is I want you to say the titles of those books so that in order. Okay. Um, and um, let's see where we are on time. So. The first book is Stand and Protect. The second book is Nico's Guilt. And the third book is Spy Play. And that book is really a roller coaster. It, it takes you from New Orleans to Paris to Monaco and back to Louisiana at the end. So you got to... A lot of people say they wish they didn't get through my books so fast. They're really fast reads, but one of them has 444 pages. So oh my gosh. it's not my fault if they read them too quickly. <laughs> now, I know from talking with you, because we're, we're friends, yeah, that, that you really like to travel. So the scenes and areas and locations that are depicted across the series, they're real places. I mean, yeah, yeah. I have a picture of myself, the front of Nico's Guilt is in Jackson Square in New Orleans. And I have a picture of myself and my husband at that exact same location. And on the front of all my books is a little silhouette of one of the characters in the books. And so on my website, I have a picture of the cover of Nico's Guild, and then I have a picture of me standing in that same location like 20 years ago. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So I know that you mentioned that Nico was actually a character that was in book number one. Right. And we have Nico's Guild. So Nico has a problem. He needs to uh, have his own book. Yeah, uh, there's some traumatic things that happen in the first book. Nico's a big muscular guy, and he tends to think that he's responsible for everybody that he knows and loves and that he should just make sure nothing happens to them and take care of them. But something happened out of his control that just really threw him for a loop and has him depressed. And in the first of the book, he's not at all like himself. He's uh, staying to himself a lot. He's drinking whiskey and smoking cigarettes. And that's just something Nico would almost never do because he's a bodybuilder and he's a big, strong guy. So it takes um, one night he's sitting at his house and he gets a phone call and he wasn't going to answer it because everybody's been bothering him because they know that he's in this depression. And it's his little sister calling out for his help, which is a very strange thing to do because Tony's a pretty kick-ass character herself. And right in the middle of that phone call, she screams his name and the phone goes dead. And so he has to just jump up and clean himself up and get on a flight to New Orleans on the hunt for his sister. And okay. all through the book, he goes guilt. He's looking for his sister. So that's perfect. Uh, we're going to take a short break and listen okay. to our sponsors and come back and, and talk a little bit more about Nico's guilt. Okay, great. I am Grace Allison Blair, an award-winning author, motivational speaker, and modern mystic. I have combined spiritual and psychological principles in my nonfiction self-help books under Grace Allison and fiction books under Grace Blair. Go to modernmysticmedia.com to find Do You Have a Dream? Five Keys to Realize Your Dream and my novel Einstein's Compass, a YA time traveler adventure. Love to read? Love to meet authors in person? Then check out bookfestival.network to find a book festival in your region of Texas. We are adding book festival events throughout the year, so sign up to get notices and even a coupon towards purchase of a Texas author's book. Sign up at bookfestival.network. War has ended, but the memory lingers on, has been written by Helen Munday and Christiane Gutling. A story of a Dutch secret agent under German occupation, highlighted drama, and then the British rescuing him and teaching him how to navigate the fairy swordfish airplane. This book can be purchased on Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, written by Helen Munday and Christian Gutling. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. Welcome back. This is Fox Berkey, and I am so honored to be able to continue my discussion with a talented author and friend, KT Banks. Welcome back, KT. Thank you. 
So when we left before uh, watching the sponsors, um, we were talking about Nico Skills, which is the second book in the series. And of course, you're, car you're carrying on a character that was in the first book. So a girl screams, the phone goes, oh my gosh, I'm biting my nails. What happens? <laughs> He does fly to New Orleans and, you know, be drinking as much as he had been drinking. It's a rough flight. Um, he goes to his sister's house that he has a key to because they're very close siblings. And um, he debates whether he should get in touch with his former partner on the Dallas Police Department, uh, Luke Manning, from the first book. But he, Luke is now married and he, he's debating should he bring him into this trouble or not. And uh, one thing leads to another. And a lot of the characters from the first book do show up again in the second book. And um, one of the locations in the second book is in St. Croix, and my family and I have been there and just loved it. So it was really fun. The whole time I was in St. St. Croix, I kept thinking, I need to write a book and have part of it be in this area. So the things I write are actually things that I see, and the villa that I describe is the villa I stayed in. Oh, there you go. So <laughs> once reading that, everybody's going to want to go to that villa so they can feel the book even closer. Yeah. So... Um, now you have characters that, that you got well-defined characters, you have a very supportive family. And so do the characters mirror like you and your family or? I don't think so. I mean, there, there are bits of me, I think, in every character just because, you know, they all come from my imagination. Um, and then, you know, my husband is a strong influence on me. So some of the romantic scenes might be inspired by him, but uh, <laughs> I'm happily married for 30, almost 32 years. But um, a lot of people think they see themselves in the characters, and they'll ask me, is that me? You know, like, no, that's just, I, like, developed in a way that was just kind of a natural, generic, you know, grassroots way. She just, the characters come and talk to me and don't let me sleep at night, and that's how the characters develop. So you really help when you write. Um, so that's a very interesting structure. Do you have a certain structure to your day when you're crafting one of your stories? No, I become OCD, obsessive compulsive about it. When I write, I give it everything I've got. My poor family gets neglected. <laughs> Luckily, they're grown now. But um, I just go into a frenzy night and day. I get up early in the morning and write until I'm exhausted late at night. My husband has to tell me to stop. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> That's good. So he's keeping track of you. Does he, <laughs> does he read all of your books? Yeah, yeah. The, is he like the first reader? Yes, and he contributes ideas too. So I used to say that they were written by both of us, but he doesn't like me to tell people that. So, so he's just support. So you've got great family support. Okay, now the third book that's in this uh, series, which um, is, I, when was that released? It's Spy Play. It was released, um, I think the end of August or beginning of September. Of last year. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you said that it's going to become an audible as well. So maybe the end of this year, it'll be available. No, I think within a couple of months, John does them pretty quickly and he just finished Nico's Guild. So I think, you know, at least by summertime, they'll all three be on audible as well as eBooks and paperbacks. So that's terrific. Um, do you find that having the same narrator across the series is an important aspect? Because I've heard that it is, but I just wanted to kind of get your sense on it. Well, you know, I'm not, I hate to say that, but I have not listened to too many Audible books. I'm, a, I'm an old-fashioned person that likes a paperback book in my hands, and I can bring it with me anywhere. I don't have to have headphones. I just really prefer paperbacks myself. But it was my sons that told me that it's important to them to have the same narrator in a series. And so, you know, they're, they're in their 20s now. My middle son is 28, and he's the one that told me, Mom, you really have to get the same guy to do all, all of them. So I, I listen to him. Well, there you go. So where are your books available for those folks that want to get a copy in whatever format they, they choose? Because, you know, you're, you're doing a good customer experience, right? Readers, readers rock. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Um, I think they're e most easily available on Amazon, but you can also go into some bookstores that they're in. And if they're not there, you can ask the clerk and they can order, they can order it for you. Or you can even go into a library and ask for them and they can order them for you. And online, besides Amazon, are they available anywhere? Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be available any, anywhere books are sold. But, you know, different bookstores order different books. So if they're not there in the brick-and-mortar store, you can ask for them to order, to order it for you. Okay. Um, all right. That's very good. So what's your website again? 
It's ktbanks.net. And it's just the initials K and T. There, a lot of people call me Katie, and that's fine, but, but I just use the initials KT Banks. And I'm also on Facebook all the time, so I'm very easy to get in touch with, and you can ask questions and tell me what you thought of the books. I really love hearing from people. Now, your website really ha has a lot of information on it for people. So, they, you know, you say you're on Facebook, and I know you respond to people on Facebook as well, which is very cool. But you have... Um, you know, samples of your books and samples of your audibles? I did put a sample of the audible on uh, the website and on Facebook. I, You can read on Amazon, you can look inside the book and read samples that way also. Okay. And the second book with, with uh, Nico looking for his sister, she's being kind of chased by a crazy Russian mobster. <laughs> and that, that has some funny parts in it, it has some scary parts in it. And then in, in the third book, um, it's a, it's a separate couple. I'm not going to name the names because it might tell you too much what happens in, in Nico's guilt. But um, it's called Spy Play because one of the main characters in that book is a spy. And he has, a, he has an interesting history and legacy. And um, he's from some, it's, a, it's my imagination, but he has some interesting ancestors. So these are fiction filled yes. with all of this adventure, all of this thrill. And now you're teasing people, so they need to <laughs> Can they read them out of order, Katie, or do, do you require that they read them in order to get the best, best read? I would suggest to read them in order. Um, some people have told me they could be standalone books. For me as the writer, the story you know, starts here and continues and goes to there. So to me, I would, I would like everybody to read them in order. But if you want to just pick up one in the middle and start reading it, I think it'll make you want to go back and read the first one and then lead you to the last one. All right, so you have, books, you have lots of characters. Who's your favorite character? <laughs> People always ask me that. And that's kind of like asking me who's my favorite child. So it's really hard to pick one. But right now, I really think out of all three books, I'm, I'm really leaning towards Nico just because I love his vulnerability. I love the fact that he's a big, strong man, but he takes everything so personally. And, and he's turned out to be one of my favorite characters. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So the series is going to continue at some point in time. Um, and before we go to the next next part, um, where, when are you going to be out and about so people could see you? And <laughs> I'm currently uh, booking some book signing events as we speak. I'm going to be doing some at the Signature Kroger stores in the Dallas, Texas area. And then I have, I have somebody asking me to come to a different state and do it. And I'm, I said, if you can set it up there, that'd be great. I'll, I'll show up. All you have to do is set it up. So I, I love doing book signings and getting to meet with the people in person and, and giving them autographed books. They, I feel funny still signing books after all this time. I've had book signings at Barnes & Noble and different bookstores. But it still is funny to me. I'll give one to my in-laws, and they'll still say, will you autograph it for me? And that's just hilarious in my mind. <laughs> I, th I think that's quite an honor that they like it enough they want to get your name on it. I think that's terrific. Um, so if people want to see you at one of these Kroger uh, venues, um, can, you, can you tell when? Uh, how yeah, can I will tell people ahead of time when I get some firm dates. I will post it on my website as well as on the social networks. And then there's, there's something else I wanted to disclose about the books. Um, all three of the books would probably be rated R if they were a movie because they do have really steamy scenes in them. And also, I wanted to tell people, you know, Stan Lee passed away a few months ago, and I really loved him and thought he was a great hero. And I read a quote of his that said that when he first started writing comic books, it kind of embarrassed him, because there were people out there that were going on to build buildings and have medical careers, and he thought, you know, all I am is a comic book writer. And then he realized how much it meant to people to be entertained. And, and if you can do that, they're doing something. And I'm with him. I never set out to write a great work of literature. I never set out to write, write the great American novel. I write entertaining books that are a lot of fun. And they get you away from the crazy world that we're in nowadays with the, the news media and the politics and everything going on. Sometimes if you can just sit back with your favorite beverage and you read a good book, it really relieves the stress of the day and everything going out, on in the world. And I really suggest everybody, you know, at least once a week, sit down with a good book and relax like that. And that's a perfect place for us to pause for just a minute. We're going to take a break and listen to a little bit of our sponsors. And we'll be right back, Katie. Stick around. Great. 
What would you do if you found out everyone on the town council were thieves and murderers? That's what happened in Bandera, Texas in 1873. John Cruder was the marshal, yet he needed to operate outside the law in order to balance the scales of justice. He is the Midnight Marauder. You can find his books on Amazon.com and TopWesterns.com in paperback, digital, and audio. I'm Roy Clinton, and I hope you'll read The Midnight Marauder. Indie Lector is a store for serious readers and indie authors. Find great talent at IndieLector.store and save money on books with their book club. A portion of the proceeds helps get books into schools and libraries in need. Find a great book to read by an indie author at IndieLector.store. What started as a love letter to her son has become an international love letter for all parents to their children. Now you can read acclaimed author Shanna Lee Charbonneau's story to your children. When her son was very sick, she calmed him by singing her own song to him. She turned that song into the book, My Mama Loves Me, I'm Her Little Boy. She wrote three more magical books for all parents and kids six and under. Available at Indie Lector, Amazon. Hi, this is Rox Berkey, and I'm here to uh, do the final segment, I'm um, sad, with uh, KT Banks, international author. And I want to kind of go in a little bit different direction now, because there's two things I think that we still need to kind of cover. Um, I noticed behind you that we have some books that are, that are set up, and one of them is like the most adorable bunny rabbit on it. <laughs> With Mr. Bunny. I wrote a story for Chicken Soup for the Soul, and it was the book called Finding Your Happiness. And that was one of the first things, one of my first writing tries to get out there and get published. So that was kind of fun for me. So who did the graphics on there? How did you get that done? All you do with Chicken Soup for the Soul is you submit the story, and if they take it, that you get you get paid for it, and you get a certain number of copies of the books, and they do everything else. So that's one of the easiest writing jobs there is now I, you all, don't you write magazine articles as well yeah I've now, written over uh, about over 100 articles um, I write for an online magazine called Kalon women that is the edited by Sandra Morgan she's in Houston Texas and I just adore her and my most popular uh, article I wrote about her was anxiety because that's something I deal with a lot in my own life and that had like I don't know 1500 views and it was shared 187 times or something it was just crazy so that was that was one of the biggest articles that I've written. So we have, we have children's books. We have thrillers with steamy scenes. And I personally have spicy, spicy stuff myself. <laughs> um, uh, are there, and then these articles, which are not fictional, um, no. anyway. So are we looking at a future book that's nonfiction from you? Maybe. I think about that sometimes. But my current work and project is another thriller, and it's not not in the standard pretend, it's a standalone book. It's very different and kind of has a different feel than the series that I've already written. It's called Secrets, and it's about these two couples that met in high school. And they go on about their lives and, and they see each other at a reunion probably 10 years later. And old jealousies and resentments come to play. And there is one murder in this book. Um, I'm not through with the book, so at least there's one murder so far. And you won't really know who did it or understand what happens until near the end of the book. Well, that's kind of trademark now, isn't it? That you yeah. want to hang in there until the, until the very end. Um, so on this new book, Secrets, um, any idea when it might be ready to uh, go for final editing? And, and I'm hoping by the beginning of summer. Okay. Okay. Um, and is it going to go through the same kind of thing where you're going to have it narrated or... Are you gonna yeah, I'm going to try to get it through all the genres again, all the, all the different venues, because so many different people require that nowadays. Everybody's so different. Like, I prefer paperbacks. My sons prefer um, audibles. And so many people, you know, tell me they want it to be on ebooks or Kindle, too. And I do little um, polls on Facebook or, or on my website a lot asking people what they want, because I want to try to please everybody. I'm a people pleaser. <laughs> And you bring up a really good point. Do you do all of your own marketing these days? Yes. 
And even even people published by the big publishing houses, unless they're James Patterson or Nora Roberts or something, they're pretty much responsible for their own marketing. They have to do a lot of their own marketing. So you can't go into a writing career thinking that all you have to do is write the book. So we're getting very close to the end of our time. So very quickly, if you could just tell folks your website one more time and your email address, that'd be great. Okay. My website is ktbanks.net. There's some videos on there and all sorts of fun stuff to look at. My uh, email address is ktbanksnovels at gmail.com. And you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and P Pinterest. And I don't know what all I'm signed up for nowadays. I try to pay attention to all of them, but I'm guilty of being mostly on Facebook. Well, that's terrific. And folks, reach out to KT, get a hold of the series, listen, read, and, and uh, enjoy, and leave a review. Oh, absolutely. Bye by reviews. So thanks very much, KT. I appreciate it. Talk so soon. good to talk to you, Rox. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website at indiebeacon.com.